Welcome back everybody. And if you're new here since the Mizkif video, I just wanna say, yo. Today we're gonna to look at and review an insane trade that took place in the high-end video game and Pokemon market between this guy, Hadouken Ito, and this guy, AC Pokemart. I've linked both their Instagrams down below if you wanna follow them. So this Pokemon Red game right here, this one, right here, the same one you grew up playing, was traded for various graded Pokemon video games and cards with a grand total value of $195,000. Now this valuation makes it the most expensive Pokemon game by about $100,000. So let's take a look at this trade and see what makes this copy of Pokemon Red so special and what was given up in order to obtain it. So let's start by looking at the Pokemon Red in question. We're dealing with a factory sealed graded example of this game. It's a WADA 9.6 A++ first print. And we know it's a first print because if you look at the back, you can see Sandrew here battling with Meowth. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, this isn't even a perfect grade. It's only a 9.6. Nope, it's not. However, this grade is tied for the highest known example that exists on this game. Now I do have to use a qualifier here of highest known graded example because it is possible that a higher one exists that we just don't know about in a private collection. Video game collecting doesn't currently have published population reports, so a lot of this information is anecdotal. So there's a bit of a risk being taken here. But as it stands right now, 9.6 A++ is the highest grade that exists and there are two known examples of it. So on the one side of this trade we have Pokemon Red first print highest graded example. And on the other side now, we have $195,000 worth of games and cards that were traded against it. I'm not gonna break down every single item in the trade, but we are gonna go over all of the highlights and the ones that really matter. So let's just start by looking at the video games that are included in this trade. In this photo here, we have a 9.4 A plus first print Pokemon Red, a 9.2 A plus second print Pokemon Red, a 9.4 A plus silver, and a 9.2 A plus gold. So that's right, in this very trade, another first print Pokemon Red in amazing condition was traded against this best known Pokemon Red. And on the 9.4 A plus Red in question, we actually have a recent sold listing for that that we can just take the data from. So about a month ago, the same variant of Pokemon Red in slightly nicer condition than this one was sold on Heritage Auctions for $72,000. So we have a really good base point there of what this one's worth. For simplicity's sake, let's just say it's $70,000. It sells for right about the same price. Maybe it would go more, maybe it would go less, but that's all speculation anyway. So a very simple way of looking at this trade is Hadouken traded away his 9.6 A++ and received a 9.4 A++ plus $125,000. So for $125,000 worth of trade value, AC Pokemart went up on the scale from here to here. Now that may seem incredibly incremental, because it is. But if you already saw my past video that talked about paying premiums for perfect condition games, then you understand what's taking place here. Since there is no 9.8 that is known to exist, and the odds of a 10 ever existing are basically zero, well then the perfect condition premium is now applied to the 9.6 A++ copy. But let's get back to the values of the trade here. If we take the four Pokemon games shown in this photo, this is going to account for about $100,000 of value. Now it might be a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how you add it up, but let's just call this $100,000. Now we get to the next portion of this trade, which features some heavy ass Pokemon cards. On the top row, we have three PSA 10 Charizard Grails. We have Shining Charizard, first edition, Legendary Collection Reverse Hollow Charizard, and the Gold Star Charizard. On the bottom row, we have PSA 10 Zapdos, first edition base set, and then we have a PSA 9 Play Promo Mew here on the left side, and a PSA 9 No Rarity Japanese Mewtwo on the right side. If I go ahead and add some prices to this photo, like this, you can get a better breakdown of the value here. Now I'm not 100% on my Pokemon values and estimates here, I could be high or low on certain ones, but this is roughly another $70,000 of the trade right here in Pokemon cards. So if we take the games that we just saw and we add on these six Pokemon cards, we're now at about $170,000 in value from the 10 items. And now it brings us to the final portion of the trade because when you're talking about $195,000, it takes a lot of stuff to get there. So in this photo, we're looking at another collection of PSA 9 and 10 Pokemon cards consisting of mostly Japanese promo cards and Ancient Mew because fuck yeah, Ancient Mew. Now I don't have the offhand knowledge to break down this picture into pricing and estimates, but if we just assume everything else was 170,000, then this is roughly $25,000 more here of Pokemon cards. If you are a Pokemon expert watching this, feel free to put in the comments a better breakdown than I gave if I'm severely off on any of the prices here. So when we piece this all together, the $195,000 Pokemon Red was traded for four graded Pokemon games, one of which is a downgrade of a first print Pokemon Red, three PSA 10 Charizard Grails, 
and 27 other PSA 9 and 10 Pokemon cards. So right now, knee-jerk reaction. What side of this trade would you rather be on? Would you rather have the Pokemon Grail, the 9.6 A++ highest known graded copy, or everything else that was involved in this trade? Don't think about it too much, just put your answer below. And I wanted to make this video right now because this is going to be very interesting to come back to in one year's time, in two years time, in five years time. When the market develops more and we see who the true winner of this trade is once more time has passed. And now let's just talk about what makes high-end trades so difficult. The Pokemon Red Grail in question has never sold at open auction. It has never traded hands in its graded form as far as I know. That means that there is no established price on this item. Of course, we can make guesses and we can infer and we can say, oh, well, this sells for this, so maybe this will sell for this. But really, we're all just speculating and guessing. The game was traded for 195k worth of stuff. So now, due to transitive properties, we are going to say the 9.6 A++ Pokemon is worth 195k. That makes sense. That That's fair. But that does not mean that this game would sell for $195,000 if it came up at open auction. Nor does it mean that AC Pokemart would have spent $195,000 cash for this game. You know when you go to take in your used games to the game store and they'll give you more in trade than they will in cash? The same principle applies here at a much larger scale. The thing is, if Hadouken now wanted to take everything he received in this trade and turn it into money, he would have to potentially take part in 30 separate transactions, pay fees on every one of those, potentially pay some taxes as well, and have to deal with all of the risks that are associated with that many transactions. Yeah, he could consign them to an auction house or something, but there's still generally going to be fees associated with that. He also has to hope that when he goes to sell the items that they all sell for their value again. Because the last known price for an item is a really good gauge, but you still have to sell your item for that price. AC Pokemart was able to take his 195k worth of games and cards and consolidate that all into one single item. One item that will hopefully be worth that amount right now and worth even more in the future. Because obviously both sides are speculating on the future value of these items. And it's far easier to sell one single item than it is 30, especially if you ever actually need the money out of it. It's unlikely at this level that he would ever need to sell the item because he's in a money crunch, but if you ever needed to, you only have to sell one item. It's also true that you can no longer take partial out of the item. When you have 30 different items, maybe you can sell 10 of them. When you only have a single item, you're stuck with that item. You either sell it or you don't. So there are pros and cons to both sides of that as well. It is very possible that Pokemart could take this Pokemon Red game right now, put it on Heritage Auctions or eBay or wherever he wants to sell it, and it sells for $150,000. That's very possible. That's a risk he is willing to take. And I mean, of course, the other side could happen too. He could put it up for auction and it sells for $250,000. That's just kind of how it works when we're talking about these grail type items that have no established price history. So with more information now broken down on this trade and a little bit of the pros and cons to both sides of it, what side of the trade would you rather be on? If you already answered prior, just go edit your answer and put if you changed your mind or not. It's very possible that this Pokemon Red game goes on to be like a BGS 10 Black Label Charizard. That's possible that that is how this game will be seen in the next 5-10 years. It's also possible that a 9.8 comes out at some point and this 9.6 is then relegated to second place. It's just all part of the game and part of the risks that these people take on. Now my personal take on the trade is I would probably be on the side of Hadouken here and receive the downgrade plus all the extra stuff. Be it you hold on to the Charizards or the Pokemon games, you have a lot of nice items that are going to appreciate in the future. So even though you gave up a pinnacle type grail piece, I think I'd be okay with stepping down a bit and receiving the extra goods as well. A little bit more diversification. Anyways, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a market update here. If you don't follow the games as much as you do as the cards, well, the games are still flying high. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to like the video. And also, if you subscribe to the channel, that would really help. We are actually dangerously close to 1,000 subs right now, so fingers crossed. That's super exciting. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.